Hello everyone and welcome to my next video on the Learning Essential Craft 3 series. Uh, this video is going to be about what I am going to call Tier 1 Power Generators. Uh, these are uh, devices that create MRU energy or power that you can use to power stuff like the Magician Table and the uh, Radiating Chamber that I went over in previous videos. And these devices don't require you to care about the balance of your power source. Um, and that balance thing is something that I keep alluding to, but I haven't made a video on quite yet. Because, I, I, but I think we're almost ready to have that video. But anyways, let's talk about these these uh, particular power generators. So these are, of course, found in the research book. Uh, most of them are, are on this tab two, the MRU and Matrix. Um, we've got the Matrix Destructor, the Natural Furnace, the Heat Generator, and then the last one is actually on the third tab, the Ender Generator. So the first one, of course, is the Matrix Destructor. Um, if you've seen my other videos, this was in my very first video. Uh, it's the first power source that you have, and it uses uh, mob energy, what I call. Uh, so the way you build it, as, as in the last video, is four iron frames, two heat rods, an elemental core, a linking device, and a collecting device. And the way you power this is you have to make a soul stone, which is this thing. A uh, soul stone is made by throwing an emerald onto a block of emerald. And then you hold it in your hand and right click and it links the soul stone to you. Um, and then you see I have 772 UB MRU energy. And I've since found out since that first video, I didn't know what that acronym stood for. Uh, but I asked the mod author and he said it's ultimate balanced magical radiation unit energy. <laughs> that, that definition is not anywhere in the book. So there you go. Some information straight from the source. Um, so you see I have 772 and let's take some of these things, whatever the... I found this when I was looking for stuff to kill. Spawn failed chicken. It's pretty terrifying. So we kill that thing and now I'm at 851 energy. So you see when you kill stuff you get energy. And uh, the way you turn that energy into usable energy is you stick your soul stone in the matrix destructor here and you see it drains it and generates MRU. And uh, in this case it's 10 of your matrix energy turns into one uh, regular energy. So there's a little bit of a conversion factor there, but you don't really usually need to worry about that. Usually this, this device is only ever used right in the beginning of the game when you have nothing else to do. Um, it's much better to make these next devices as quickly as you can so you have a better source of uh, uh, power. Slowness. You know, I think those failed check-ins are giving me negative status effects because this, this happened a minute ago, but whatever, let's just keep going. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the natural furnace. Uh, this uses plant energy. So the natural furnace is built by two heat rods, a collecting device, a fortified frame, a magical display, elemental core, world interacting device, a magic plate, and an MRU conversion matrix. Um, and again, if you want to see the recipes for any of these items, they're all in the book. Uh, like, for example, if you go back to the entry for the natural furnace, here's the recipe. Um, or you can watch my other videos for those particular recipes. So as the book says, uh, this thing burns grass, saplings, and flowers. And it burns them in an 8-block radius on the same Y. So uh, you can't put things like way above it or way below it. Uh, but it has to be on the on the same um, height as this thing. And importantly, it only burns uh, those three things, from what I've found: uh, grass blocks and or grass uh, saplings and flowers. And it generates different amounts of energy from different plants, apparently. So, if you want to go out and pick a bunch of flowers, you can use them to to generate. Uh, power for you. And as, as you can see, it doesn't do anything to fully grown trees. I have a tree back here. It's not burning it. And it's also not burning grass blocks. Uh, it has to be like the grass that grows, like this stuff. So I have saplings, grass, and, and a poppy. So if we put the grass nearby, see it starts burning it. And we're getting MRU uh, in our furnace here. And it burns it into a dead bush, and I think that goes away eventually. But we get 750 from one thing of grass. Um, now if we do a sapling, that should also start burning it shortly. I hope. Put a couple down, maybe. There it goes. It takes a minute to get going, I guess. 
Um, and see now we're burning that. And that makes quite a bit more energy. See, there's a little display here that shows you what you're currently burning and how long it takes. You don't actually, you're not actually able to put anything in that slot. It just kind of shows you what's being burnt at the time. All right, so sapling, you can see, generates significantly more energy than uh, just regular grass does. So you can get rid of that. And then see, you can't put anything in that slot. And then uh, poppy flower. That should generate the most energy out of any of these, if the book is correct. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. All right, so that's how much gets generated. So there's a use for if you're chopping trees down to just to get the wood, uh, and you know all those saplings fall out. Here's a good use for all those saplings instead of just throwing them away. So that is the natural furnace. The next one uh, I want to talk about is the heat generator. Uh, this is the one that I used in my base because uh, it's it's a very good generator, I think. Um, so the way that this thing is built. We have two heat rods, a core, a inter world interacting device, a magic fortified frame, collecting device, a conversion matrix, a magical display, and a magical plate. It's very similar to the natural furnace. In fact, I think, I think it's the same ingredients, just in a separate, in a different uh, configuration. So if that's true, yeah, I think they're exactly the same. It's just the uh, same components, just a different uh, arrangement. So in that case, it might, I would recommend just building the heat generator since it's not any more uh, work to make this thing. It's much more efficient than the natural furnace, and you don't have to constantly feed it things. But, uh, I mean, hey, you can make both of them if you want to and have them both feed the same uh, battery, which the battery is what I went over in the last video. All right, so anyways, the uh, heat generator here under the book, um, again, tells you how to build it and how to power it. So you need, there's three different ways you can generate heat with this. One of them uses netherrack, another one uses fire, and the best one uses lava. So you can see if you just use netherrack, it makes five MRU per tick. If you have fire, you get eight MRU per tick. And then if you have lava, you have 16 MRU per tick. Um, so you have, um, this is the configuration, the heat generator in the middle, a, a space of air, and then a, another rack or, or fire or lava uh, in, a, in a configuration like this. So I've, I've made the little plus here out of basalt to, so you can see what's going on. Um, so let's get another rack and some lava. All right, I, I had uh, forgotten how this thing works, despite it being the thing I actually used in my game. But uh, I remembered now, so here's, here's how you do this. So you have your heat generator in the middle. Um, the first tier is to have four nether racks around the edges. Um, and then you see it says six MRU per T is what it makes. You need to burn things. That's what I forgot. You need to burn stuff. So uh, you put a coal in the slot, and it uh, starts to burn. So there we go. That's what it was. So it starts to burn just like a regular furnace. Um, you just have to set it up in this particular configuration before it'll actually generate anything. So you burn coal, uh, which lasts quite a while, and it also generates this magical slag as a byproduct. That's used in a couple of recipes um, later on, and I, the most useful of those is on, let's see here, it's on the third page. Yeah, the magical lantern. Um, I use this all the time. The magical lantern requires a little bit of magical slag, but it uses slag to generate uh, little light sources. So you right click with this thing and it makes like a torch. Uh, it's an invisible torch. Um, so it's nice to, you know, if you're using this thing for power, you have a crap load of magical slag. You can just use that instead of making torches and you can use your hard earned coal to make power for your base. So this thing is still burning at uh, six MRU per tick. lasts quite a while, which that's the uh, benefit of this over the natural furnace, I think, is it lasts quite a long time. All right, and that made 9,600 MRU uh, at 6 MRU per tick. 
So if we want to improve this, first of all, let me break this and put it back down so it doesn't have any energy in it anymore. Um, then what we want to do is break those because the next tier of this thing is to use fire instead of netherrack. So I have netherrack down there so the fire lasts. So you light four fires around it. Uh, and it should update shortly to what do the books say? Eight MRU per tick is what this one should do. It says four right now. Maybe that'll update when I put a coal in there. It's working. It says four though. I wonder if that's a bug. Let's see how much how much power it ends up generating. With this configuration, it only made 6,400 MRU. I think that's a bug. This is supposed to generate more power than just netherrack by itself. So that's interesting. I'll have to talk to the author about that one. Um, but in the meantime, let's break that again. Put it back down. And uh, this time, the most efficient way to do it is with lava. So I have little lava squares because I'm in, you know, I, I just made it from creative. But you can f go find lava and get buckets and carry it up. So that's the configuration for using lava. Um, now it's the proper 16 MRU per tick. And we put a coal in there. And let's see how much that generates. Yeah, so this thing's already filled up and it's only not even halfway done burning the coal. So this is far and away the most efficient way to use this generator. Uh, so that's definitely the way you want to do it. And it's not that hard to get four lavas. So absolutely do it this way. So that's the heat generator. It uses coal to make electricity. or Not, not electricity, but power. Um, and uh, it's probably the one of the more efficient ones, I think. But let's go on to the last one for this particular video. It's called the Ender Generator. Um, and this uses Enderman energy. <laughs> So it's made by a uh, two conversion matrices, a collecting device, a magical display, a magic fortified frame, a core interacting device, a plate, and this time an ender scale alloy. So that's again very similar to these other generators, except it uses an ender scale alloy. Uh, and that one, I went over in the last video how to make those, and again, that's in the book if you want to. But the, the way this one works is it generates power from Endermen, and it generates a lot of power from Endermen. So this is uh, on the third tab, uh, and it says what it does is it, it sucks Endermen towards it and holds them there, and it damages them until they die. And it says this generates 500 MRU per hit. So one, MRU, one Enderman gives you around 20,000 MRU. So it's a really good power source, but of course, finding and luring Enderman to it is a little bit problematic. So this would be suitable if your base had already had like an Ender spawner set up. So if you can find an Enderman spawner and bring it here. Uh, actually, in the end, in, in this particular mod pack, the, the Horizon Zonebreaker, in the end, there's tons of... Enderman spawners around on those little floating islands. So if you haven't checked out the end yet in this uh, uh, expansion, it's very, very cool. They added a ton of stuff. Uh, so let's see here. I need to... In order to spawn the Enderman, I need to set this thing back uh, to normal difficulty. So it's not on peaceful. Or at least, just not peaceful. Anyways, uh, let's spawn an Enderman here. See, so, like, it pulls it right to there. Oh, he escaped. We got 2,000 MRU out of him. But he escaped. Get back here. Well, let's just do another one, then. Maybe if I don't look at him. Now he escaped again. It's supposed to hold him on there. Can you tell I haven't actually done this before? <laughs> Well, this would be good if you weren't out in the open like this. You know, build a little building around this thing and uh, have an ender spawner next to it, and it should reliably generate power. I've seen another video where somebody did that. This was their power source. He had an ender spawner next to it. It was in a room underground, and it seems to work pretty great. So, um, good, way, good way to make lots and lots of power if you have a spawner. 
So that's the key. Alrighty, let's uh, get back to peaceful before this guy kills me. <laughs> Alright, uh, that's the end of the tier one power generators. These are power creation devices that you can make without having to care about the balance of your power system. So thanks for watching and uh, happy building.